Happy Friday, Junior, everyone, and welcome to the Gwinnett Leadership Organization for Women webinar series. The GLOW webinar series was created to ensure that women have a place where they are heard, feel appreciated, and most importantly, take time to self-reflect. I'm Lena Teitelbaum, one of the program and events managers here at the Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce. Today, you'll hear for, from Dr. Kelly Middleton, an orthopedic surgeon at Northside Hospital. That being said, she is currently in surgery still and told us she will be joining us as soon as she gets out, the life of a doctor. So we will just be improv a little until she gets on. Um, this program would certainly not be possible without the support of our sponsors. I would like to now welcome Mia Hubert from Regions Bank, who will tell us a little bit more about them. Good afternoon, everyone. As Lena said, my name is Mia Hubbard, and I am one of the market managers for Regions Bank. Regions Bank is a um, the financial corporation with $147 billion in assets and is a member of the S&P 500 index and is one of the nation's largest full service providers of the consumer and commercial banking, wealth management, and mortgage products and services. We serve uh, our customers across the South, the Midwest, Texas, and through its subsidiary uh, offices. We have over 1,400 banking offices, 2,000 ATMs, 370 video bankers. Regions Bank is an equal housing lender and a member of FDIC. And with that, I am proud to announce that Regions is the proud sponsor of this highly anticipated, highly successful GLOW monthly webinar series for 2021. This virtual event will bring speakers to discuss issues particularly relevant to women and will be available to all Gwinnett County Chamber of Commerce members. Regions Bank continues to align ourselves with organizations such as the Gwinnett County Chamber of Commerce that supports diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that really highlights women in leadership roles. At the end of this webinar, you may have additional questions about Regions. My team and I will be happy to assist you in any way possible. You can schedule an appointment on regions.com for a location that's nearest you, or feel free to email me at mia.hubbard at regions.com. Thank you and enjoy the webinar. And with that, I'll toss it back over to you, Lena. Thank you, Mia. And thank you so much to Regions for being our GLOW webinar sponsor. This means a lot to all of you ladies watching. That means that we're able to do this for 10 more episodes this year. Last year was our year of just going with the flow, but thanks to them, you will all be able to log in for free. There will never be a cost for this. So not, I'm using this time for share it with anyone. They don't have to be from Georgia. They can be from truly across the world and just log on to this link. And we can't thank Regions enough for that. Next, I want to thank our GLOW annual sponsors. Thank you to our presenting um, sponsor, Northside Hospital. Thank you guys for everything you're doing, our nurses and everyone who's taking care of all of our COVID-19 patients. Next, I want to thank our principal sponsors, Duke Realty. Hi, Jamie, and hi to the Duke Realty Women's Network. There's a lot of you on here, so I just want to say hi. Um, thank you to Wealth Horizon, Hi, Jury, and Lynn. Thank them because they have been sponsors for, they're the longest standing GLOW sponsors. Next, I want to thank our supporting sponsors, Level 7 Facilities. Hey, Margo and Angie, thank you guys for everything you do for our community. And lastly, I want to thank Georgia Credit United Uni Union and hi, Lee. Next, I want to thank Swanee Town Floors. If you guys are looking for some last minute Valentines, go ahead and reach out to them. And then Twin Cookies and Sweets. She makes the cutest cookies ever. Um, look her up on Instagram. All right. Thank you all for your commitment to our GLOW program and our GLOW webinar series. Before we get started, I want to tell you all about our next few chamber events. First, I would like to tell you about our Gwinnett County State of uh, our Gwinnett State of the County Address. That will be on March 3rd at 12 Stone Church. This is going to feature Chairwoman Nicole Love Hendrickson. The anticipation for this event has been truly electric. Chairwoman Hendrickson is the first Black Chairwoman of the Gwinnett County Board of Commissioners. There are still seats available in person and virtually. Our next GLOW webinar will be on Tuesday, March 9th. Our topic will be the generational impact of mental health. We will have two panelists for this event, Dr. Ariel 
Williams and Kadisha Evans. Both of them are from Eastside Medical Center. This panel will be a discussion on how mental health affects our family dynamics during COVID-19. So you won't wanna miss that. You can register for both of these events if you simply go to gwinnettchamber.org slash events. Once Dr. Middleton joins us, well, you'll have the opportunity to utilize that Q&A button to ask your questions. Please make sure you put it in the, oh, she is on. So let me go ahead and introduce her. I would like to introduce Dr. Kelly Middleton. Dr. Kelly Middleton is a passionate and highly motivated orthopedic surgeon who places great emphasis on providing advanced comprehensive orthopedic sports medicine care. She specializes in complex shoulder, elbow, and knee, having trained the top orthopedic fellow program in the nation, the Hospital of Special Surgery in New York, New York. During her training, she helped take care of the NBA and the WNBA teams, the New York Knicks and the New York Liberty. She also served as an assistant physician for Woodland Hills High School football team in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a Georgia native, she was a three sport high school athlete. She graduated early from University of Notre Dame as a Big East Conference player and continued her NCAA career at the University of York, Georgia. At U UGA, Dr. Middleton became a two-time All-American while earning her master's in public health. She then went to work into Berkeley, California in public school and public policy while playing professional fast pitch softball in medical school. We are so happy to have you here with us, Dr. Middleton. You have the floor. Thanks, Lena. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, thanks, Lena, I appreciate it. So I am actually just finishing up with surgery and in between another one. So I just figured that this was actually the perfect time to talk about loving oneself in the OR. I tried to get the lighting a little bit better. I could not find a good spot. So um, you guys just let me know if there's anything with the audio or lighting or if you can't see. It's just gonna basically be me chatting, me talking. So what I wanted to talk about today, specifically when it came to the workplace and taking care of oneself in the workplace and loving oneself in the workplace, you know, when I first got the, the title of the talk and I was talking uh, to Lena about it, um, especially around Valentine's Day, it's all about self love and loving others. And uh, the first thing I thought about was we don't take care of ourselves enough, period. And then on top of that, in the workplace, it's almost like we have two different sides of who we are. And I don't think that we should neglect one just because we're in the workspace. That's not saying to, that we shouldn't be professional or um, you know, we, we should speak our mind more often or not speak our mind more often or be more silent. But what it means is we always have multiple faces that are presented. Um, you have your friends, just like think about it, when you go home, um, meaning like when you, where you grew up in your neighborhood or like you guys have high school friends, uh, or college friends that when you get together, like they know you, you're, you let your hair down, you, uh, your, your language changes, um, your cadence may change. Like when my mom gets around her family and she's from New York, like we tell her, we don't even recognize her. We can't understand her. We make fun of her accent. But um, it's the same thing when it comes to the people that you're around. They know you and you can feel completely within yourself in that environment. In the same sense though, my goal is to also feel completely within myself within the work environment. Obviously, I don't know them that well, right? And I try to, even though we say some communities and some establishments talk about um, the, the family or the Coca-Cola family or you know the Northside family, et cetera, I try to, <laughs> they're not my family. They're not my family, they're not my close friends, but that doesn't mean I shouldn't be myself in that environment. So to maintain that boundary, but at the same time, at the same time, be myself. That's one of the things that we're going to talk about today, in terms of uh, making progress towards that, because it's all about self love. When you're comfortable with yourself, when you're confident with your with yourself, you can be cool and collected no matter in which environment you're yourself, right? So the same thing with self love in a work environment. Number one, let me just pull up my notes here. Number one. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of self-love in the work environment, going back to the point where this not, they're not your family. So what do we depend on our family for? 
we depend on our family and we can't always choose our family, right? But I'm sure some of us have at least one person that we're like close to and near and dear with, with, with regards to our family. Um, but when it comes to family though, somebody's got your back. Somebody can let your guard down. Somebody who knows your flaws, but loves you and encourages you and, and actually loves you because of those. And also strengthens you uh, in times when you feel weak. Don't expect it at work. <laughs> Don't expect it at work. They are our colleagues. They are our, our coworkers. Uh, they are our employers in some cases. Um, uh, so if we can automatically separate that, again, you can still be yourself, but think of it different in terms of, okay, this set of people has my best interest in mind no matter what, whether that's your husband, your wife, your children, um, whoever it is, your mom, your dad, they have their, your best interest in mind that's not always the case in a work environment. It would be nice if they did, but don't expect it. So then if you have that understanding, you can still, again, be your cool, cool calm, collected self and be comfortable and confident in it, but your expectations of that relationship is totally different. And, and when I finally wrapped that around my head or wrapped that around my brain and was able to capture that, it eliminated a lot of stress that I felt that I've, I had to um, you know, be a certain way or, or maintain a certain relationship with certain people or what if, you know, now they don't like me and now they just take it away. You treat everybody with respect. And when it comes to your family, you have your family. You don't necessarily need your family anywhere else. You have your coworkers. In the same sense, my teammates. So when I played softball, when I played professionally in college, et cetera, I had teammates. I had some teammates that were friends, but I didn't, the rest of them though were teammates. So what does that mean? That means if we were not playing softball, would I have ever been friends with them? Probably not. But when we're there together, we have the same goal to win. Right now in healthcare for me, it's to take care of my patients, right? When I'm in the room with my team, our same goal is to take care of the patient. When, we were, when I was uh, uh, on the field with my team, the goal was to win, you know? So when you're at work with your team, the same goal should be to make money, you know, to get that client, um, to push out those products, to ship this, et cetera. You should have that goal. And everybody's goals are different in terms of achieving the one big goal that we all have in common, but they don't necessarily have to be your friends. You may have some, and it may be a plus that you have somebody that's got your back uh, in a team environment, but they don't have to be, they're your teammates. So as long as you have the, the goal in sight and you can work together, you eliminate a lot of those expectations, those, oh, I don't know if she's gonna, uh, or he's gonna like this or that, or being concerned about what others think, it shouldn't matter. Because if everybody maintains that level, those boundaries of this is my family, these are my close friends, uh, these are my kids, these are my whoever, and then these are my, my teammates, right? Even if sometimes you have teammates who are friends there, yes, they're over here, but these are your teammates. It's the same thing in the work environment. And it eliminates a lot of stress that you typically don't need uh, in the workplace. Um, one reason I'm talking about that more so than even like loving yourself in terms of, uh, you know, taking time out. Last year I spoke about taking time out to exercise, walk, do yoga. Uh, and I would still encourage those things to maintain yourself. That is a part of the whole self-love to maintain yourself. But one thing though, that I will say that I'm gonna really uh, harp on this year too, is in the workplace, that's especially now guys, like this past year has been difficult for a lot of us. And every day I wake up, I put my feet on the ground and I say, thank you. Because I get to go to work um, because I'm walking, because I'm alive, because my family is safe, thank God. Um, but I've had coworkers, I've had friends um, who have lost um, parents recently. Um, I lost a, a friend from college. She was around my same age. Um, she was 35 years old, left a 10 year old son um, when she died secondary to COVID. It's been, it's been a hard, uh, you know, 2020 and we, we all know that and we all have our stories and it's tough and there's a lot of people that are still going through. And on top of that, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily have uh, a job to go to. So the other thing, point number two, when it comes to the workplace 
and self-love in the workplace is gratitude. So like I said, every morning when I wake up and put my feet on the ground, I even thank God that I can feel my feet because there are people who can't, people with diabetes who have neuropathy, et cetera. The little tiny things that you can just say thank you for. Thank you for me even going to a job. Some of us are working from home and have the ability to work from home, but we're no longer getting out and about. We're no longer walking like we did before, exercising or even interacting with people. You know, most of the time we're on the phone. So it can be pretty stressful, especially if you don't have a routine or your routine is kind of like get up and I mean, put on some leggings and a sweatshirt. That's usually my go-to if I'm working from home uh, and, and, and do work. But you wanna make sure though, that no matter what environment you're working in, that you maintain that, that spirit of gratitude and appreciation because it, it's, been, it's been a rough year. So that's my, my number two. And then honestly, gratitude probably goes up there with the number one, but it's definitely my number uh, two because my second point, because it's easy to get so caught up in everything that you do. Like even, even today, guys, this is the perfect example. So I'm, I'm trying to schedule it and coordinate it so that I, um, I could get my presentation done so I could have time to be myself, uh, get dressed in my, in my attire and, and not get phone calls from the you. Um, sorry. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out like that, literally. But the best part about it, and this is set, point number three, is flexibility. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do uh, be open to different moves, be open to, oh, they want this Zoom meeting um, at this point in time, or I got to get that, that deadline tomorrow, I have to do it then. Um, uh, why does my boss want to meet on a Friday at 4.30 p.m.? Why are we doing a Zoom at 5 p.m. on, th on Friday? You know, uh, anything, those little tiny things, or I just got this email, now I have to go do this. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot that we can't control. And, but the things that we can control is our approach. So again, all of this comes back to self, right? So number one, you know, you controlling yourself, controlling the things you can, you can control, okay? Knowing and understanding, setting your own expectations, being yourself in no matter what environment you have, okay? So home, work, friends, et cetera. You can be yourself, but understand the expectations and the relationships that you have with others and your boundaries. That's number one. Number two, gratitude. When we are in a place of gratitude, that is when we are most like ourselves. We let everything go. We literally just thank God, thank our creator, thank whoever we believe in for the moment that we have, for that second, because you don't know when you won't have it. Um, I've seen it go in the blink of an eye. Um, I've witnessed it firsthand. Um, you never know. And so that spirit of gratitude helps bring you back to your center and helps bring you back to who you are. And it also always, always, it makes you feel more in the cool, calm, collected, confident, just the, the stress-free zone of who you are, of me. That's your true self. And we don't always have that, but th these are the things that bring us back to that true self. And then, as I mentioned before, for my third point is flexibility. So the more flexible you are, the easier things will be to adapt to. So I read a book when I was in college called Who Moved My Cheese? I'm blanking on the, the author right now. My dad gave it to me and he has a couple of different books out too that I've read. Um, and he used to always say that when I was in high school, um, like move with the cheese, move with the cheese. I was like, what is he talking about? Like dad, this is like, you're not listening. And then I read that book and I was like, that's true. Think about it, just keep it simple. It's like a little mouse, right? If you, if you move the cheese somewhere else, is the mouse contemplating like, why'd they move the cheese? How dare they do that? Now who touched my cheese and everything? No, the mouse just simply goes to where the cheese is. If you move the cheese in another part, just move with the cheese, keep it simple. So flexibility, that's something that also takes a lot of stress and a lot of pressure off of us is to be able to be, okay, you know what? Sure, that happened, cool, we're gonna keep it moving. We're gonna keep it rolling. Just like today, you know what? Everything will work out. That's what I tell myself. Everything will work out, it's gonna be great. Everything will work out. We're gonna, we're gonna make it happen. And it does, it does just with that attitude. And I think that that makes a huge difference as well because what's the alternative? Me being like, oh gosh, this is gonna be horrible. Nothing's gonna work. It's not gonna happen. I mean, and if it doesn't happen, would you rather be upset 
you know, the whole day thinking, you know, thinking about the negativity or would you rather be happy the whole day? And then, okay, it doesn't happen. Keep it moving, keep it flowing. And not to mention, I honestly believe that those energies, if you're staying in a positive and a flexible and a, you know what, it is what it is. We're going to keep moving. We're going to march forward, onward and upward, or, you know what, sure, that doesn't work. All right, cool. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. And if you maintain that open mind and that open flow, that's when other opportunities can actually come in. But when you're fixating on one thing that has to be done or, or one person, you had it all set up and, and somebody, you know, moved your stapler this much, you know, or you had it all set up and, and, you know, one of your kids didn't put, you know, his dish, his dish in the sink or something like that, that adds to our stress and it takes us away from who we are. And truthfully, that's why when I think about self-love, it's you being who you are because it's, it's it, you know, there's all sorts of different definitions, but it's you being who you are, comfortable who you are, and in the moment of who you are. So if we allow certain things on the outside to impact us, i.e. relationships with employees, et cetera, if we don't take, uh, if, if we take for granted the little things that we have, you know, feeding ourselves that day, um, opening our eyes and actually being able to see, um, having our family there, um, you know, having FaceTime, that's been a huge thing because, you know, shoot, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been able to, to do that, um, to communicate, still communicate with our family members. Little things like that, to, to not take those for granted and to be grateful, they bring us back into that space, into that cool, confident, collective self-love space where we can be ourselves, fill in the blank, where I can be me. So number three, that one is flexibility. In terms of I know that you know a lot of people say this, especially when it comes to self-love, is um, learning to forgive and let go. So that's number four, and that's probably the toughest one. And I'm not just talking about other people. What I really am talking about is yourself, ourself, oneself. Um, you know, there's a lot of us who, there's probably even a lot of us too, we're doing this webinar. Yes, we are go-getters and we love to be supported and surrounded by one another. And I think that that's awesome. And we can, we should continue to do that and build one another together, you know, build one another up. But we are also, because of that, pretty hard on ourselves and pretty hard on other people um, and pretty hard on even the people that we love. But I think that one thing that's very important is if you can forgive yourself, and if you can let yourself, let your own guard down or your own mental attacks, not necessarily you know, bad attacks on yourself, but just beating yourself up or feeling guilty over certain things, if you can just let that go, it's easier to do that with other people. And also those people will wanna spend more time with you, especially with your family or your loved ones, your friends, and even, even your coworkers, like some stuff, just let it go. Because you know what? I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. At the end of the day, no one is perfect, right? So if we let that go and understand that, even in the moment, there are some moments that are so intense, especially when it comes to life and death, where I am intense and I expect everybody to be perfect. We got to be on it. And I literally say, y'all, we need to be A game every day, A game all day. But if you always set your expectations like that, or at least strive, okay, because you have standards and everybody does their best, that's all I ask for. Because sometimes things happen that are unexpected and sometimes mistakes happen. But if everybody is on their A game and doing their best in those, the, the number of mistakes or the depth uh, the, or the volume of the mistake is gonna be very small, minuscule, if everybody brings their A game, yes. But if a mistake does happen and you're doing your best, you don't beat yourself up for that. You know, this past week in the Super Bowl, one of the reasons I love Mahomes is because if you look at him on the sideline, he kind of looks the same all the time. The only difference is, you know, sometimes he's smiling more than you know, compared to, you know, if he's winning versus if he's losing. Uh, but he's still cool on the sideline. He's just like this. He looks the same, which is awesome. Cause you get to, if you have that type of control, to where no matter what goes on, so going back to finding ourselves and our love and our center, because that's when we're our true selves and that truly is self-love. We're there, we're calm, we're cool, we're collected, we're confident. It doesn't matter what else is going on around us. It doesn't matter. And when we're in that space, that is a true, that is the pinnacle of self-love because we're in that moment and we, we love ourselves so much that there's so many things going on around us that can be chaotic and it doesn't matter. It'll all work out. It's like we're in our Zen zone. That's that 
point of self-love or when you see for instance you know when i saw um my nephew for the first time his picture and he looked exactly like my little brother i like immediately just everything just it didn't even matter especially because my brother was was deployed at the time when his son, his son was born um so he missed the first six months of his life you know it it just touched me in such a way uh, and eventually one day it will when I have children, but it just, me, it just touched me in such a way that um, nothing else mattered. And it's that same feeling, that same com comfort, that same love where it just was. You didn't have to force it. You didn't have to think of anything. So our pathway to getting there, number one, set your boundaries and know what to expect. You have teammates who are also your friends and you have some friends who are on your team, right? And those are your teammates too, but separate it, just like your coworkers, et cetera. And then the number, number two, gratitude. So gratitude is a great attitude to have no matter what, because you'll keep getting more and more and more. Not that you should be grateful just so you can get more. I don't want to you know, push that much of the wall. But it's true though, when you have an attitude of gratitude, things come to you, things happen. And then three, flexibility. The more flexible I am, and I even sense it, like the more at peace I am, the more in love with myself in that moment, et cetera, that I am, the more I realize that, yeah, sure. Because you move, it's almost like watching a, a river or watching the clouds. You're just there. You're moving with the clouds. You're moving with the wind. You're moving with the water. And that's really, again, is to get us back to our zen, our zen zone or our love zone for ourselves. It's that cool, calm, collected, confident space that all of us deserve to be in. Every single person deserves to be in. And we all have things that we can use. We all know which they are individually to get there. And then four, forgive. So we do have to, I think that's hard to do. That's tough to do. Um, you know, especially when you're so driven, if you're type A or A plus or A plus plus or triple A, um, you know, it, it is tough to kind of, sit back and say, you know what, it's okay. Or even in our, our high schoolers or college students, you know, or your children um, who are doing virtual school, you know, and um, trying to do their best and their straight A's, et cetera. But sometimes it's, it's okay to get, to, to get a B. It's okay, you do your best. And then sometimes you just keep it moving. Forgive yourself, don't, definitely don't beat yourself up for something when you are doing your best. You'll make it happen next time because you don't want to get caught up in that I should have done this. The conditionals is what I call it. When I start thinking in conditional, I'm like, ah, time to change the mindset. Turn, turn that music off, put on another station because it's the I should, I should have, I would have, I could have, you know. Uh, those bring you back in the past. They do absolutely nothing for you, but stress you out and take you out of your love zone, right? Because then you're critical of yourself. Why didn't you do that then? It takes you out of that love zone. It takes you out of your Zen zone. It takes you out of the cool, calm, collected, confident. But if you say, you know what, it happened. I'm gonna move on. We're gonna go to the next thing. Forgive yourself. It's okay to make mistakes and then forgive yourself for anything that you've done in the past too. Cause it, and then also, you know, forgive other people and it'll help, it'll make it easier to forgive other people. It sometimes takes a while to get to that point. And there are some people who, will not be forgiven, I'm just kidding. There's, there's some people who don't deserve to be forgiven. But, uh, you know, to get to that point where at least you can, you, you know, I, I, I always say too, if you get hurt and whatnot, that uh, you can forgive, but I'm not gonna forget, right? True with other people, absolutely true. But number one though, I want you to forgive yourself. That's, that's the biggest thing um, is, is to forgive yourself. That's a whole different discussion. We're talking about forgiveness of other people, but not, okay, I'm just fine. Um, so that's number four. And like I said before, there's so many different ways that we can give back to who we are in ourselves. Lena, am I good on time, babe? I just want to make sure. Yep, you're good on time. Okay, all right, cool. Um, perfect. So uh, in terms of giving, i sorry, I just realized that there's some questions. Should I answer the questions as we're going or what? You, you sure can. Okay, all right, cool. Um, so uh, those are the four things to get. I'll just kind of finish up, do my spiel. There's those, and then we'll answer the questions. The, those are the four things that I try to remember to bring ourselves back to. Uh, and it does get tough. And like I said, nobody's perfect. Uh, I certainly am not. I'll be the first one to admit it, you know. 
Um, but you know, I, I'm I'm perfect in my imperfections. I love I love that moment, you know, or or staying in the moment. And sometimes, it, like I said, it's it's tough to do, and it's a daily decision. But when I do get into those situations or circumstances where you're thinking like, oh, I should have done this, the conditionals, right? Or you know, you have a a, a tough time at work. Um, or there was a, a spat or disagreement with someone at work. Um, and I'll tell you right now too, as women, you know, um, a lot of us don't particularly like confrontation, right? Um, which I always wondered when I say that, like who really does love it? Like who loves it that much? So they're like, ooh, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, maybe there are people like that, but um, back to my point though, we are averse to it. Like, you know, you would prefer not to, to do that. Um, to offend others, right? Um, the people who, when you think about feelings um, and the people whose feelings you don't wanna hurt, those are the people who love you and who care about you um, uh, and your interest, right? So one thing that I'll say, even in asking for a promotion or a raise to like, you know, you don't want somebody to think of you differently. And, and the number one reason why a lot of women don't necessarily get that promotion or that raise um, compared to men is because we don't ask um, for whatever reason and you got to ask and is that going to piss off some people or who does she think she is absolutely but you also can't give a f you know um, in the, at the same time um, so that's why I say before when it comes to relationships right the people at home that you care about yeah i care about what they, what they think of me i care about and that's there's few and far between like i said it's literally just family i care about them i care about because they have my best interest in mind right but if you're trying to negotiate a deal right it's business i don't we don't necessarily need feelings involved or you thinking that you're going to hurt someone's feelings you got to go ask go get it and not be afraid to that it may cause friction you can't be afraid of that. You know, I'm not saying go out and hurt people or, or, you know, say mean things. That's not, that's not what it is at all. It literally is asking for what you're worth, asking for what you deserve and you shouldn't have to ask, but we do. And so I, part of that is understanding those relationships because when you think of it like that too, at work, like I shouldn't care about, think about the people who you actually care about what they say about you that day, right? I can, I can count them on my hand. I, I can seriously count them on my hand. If they tell you something, right, then you know that they're doing it from a place of safety and love. You know that, and so you believe them most of the time. It takes us a while for us to believe our parents more than that, but you believe them, right? That's the, whole, that's, that's the only thing that should matter. So then when you're going into your workspace and if you're gonna ask for that promotion or for whatever you're gonna ask for, you know, um, that time off, uh, that raise, um, et cetera. You should do it knowing that, look, feelings aside, this is what I deserve. This is my worth. This is what I, I've worked hard for and I'm gonna ask for it. And then I'm not afraid of someone saying no. I, I'm not afraid of confrontation. I'm not afraid of somebody saying no. What's the worst thing that'll happen if they do say no, you know? The worst thing that would happen is you never asking. That is the worst thing. That is what makes me sad for people who don't necessarily do that. That is what makes me wanna advocate for people to do and also to continue to encourage people to do that because especially when they deserve it, you know? Um, so that's, that's one thing, that was an aside. And I thought of that because I was thinking about some of the questions that are being posed. Um, okay, I'll uh, answer some questions, let's see. Um, Dorothy, you just asked a really good one, but I'm gonna go up to the top, Miss London, Karen, okay. And then I'll get to you, Dorothy, I promise. Uh, what are your suggestions for giving constructive feedback to your teammates? Whoo, that's a good question. That's a great question, actually. I've thought about this a lot. I'm gonna go back to my point number one, family and teammates, right? Or friends and teammates, however you wanna break it down. Sometimes, it is best for the sake of the team that you not say something, that you just take care of the problem. And then in a different environment, when the team is not involved, uh, people's guards are a little bit down, uh, taking that one person to the side 
and literally approaching it from a standpoint of getting to know one, one another, especially if you don't know them, um, just to see what's going on. Um, because sometimes everybody's got a story. That's one thing that I've learned. Everybody has a story. And the more I know some of the people that I'm working with, the more some of their actions or things that they say or things that they do make sense. And not saying that you can anticipate what they're gonna do, but then it also helps you tailor how you're gonna say, um, hey, I, I really need this to be done. I asked you about it last week. Would you, would you mind? Because then you get, hey, I know that you know you've got this going on. I know you had to pick up your, your son from from school because he was running a fever, etc. So it's totally fine. How about I do this? It'll help you tailor, you know, um, how you can provide that constructive uh, feedback because that's that is a tough question in many regards um, because in some circumstances they need to be told in that moment that you know this was done wrong and this is how we rectify it. But I always, 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 people used to call it the shit sandwich or something like that, where you give them like a more, oh, no, compliment sandwich, not shit sandwich or something else, where you uh, give them a compliment first and then give them the feedback and then do something positive. I can smell <laughs> a mile away when people are doing that. Um, and sometimes it's annoying, um, but if you're doing it with the right heart, so to speak, because you actually do care about that person or the patient that I'm focusing on or getting out of shipment, et cetera. It doesn't matter what your field is or teaching a child. You know, it doesn't matter what your field is. In that moment is it is important to articulate what exactly you need, but do it from a standpoint where, like I said, it's almost like a sandwich, um, but from the heart, not just like a, um, I like your um, shoes. Um, you really messed up on that. That presentation it was horrible. Um, by the way, your hair looks great. You know, not like that. It doesn't work like that. You just let them know like, hey, um, how, how, are, how do you feel like things are going right now? What do you think you're doing great? And then they usually tell you, what do you think you can improve upon? Sometimes they even do the feedback for you. You know, what do you think you can improve upon? Um, and then they'll tell you that and then reiterate the things. Yeah, I definitely think that you're doing great at that. Additionally, I think you're also, you know, kicking ass in this department or, you know, you're, you're, I really appreciate how last week when you did this, give an example, because a lot of people need to feel appreciated and then say, is there anything I can do to help you? Because this is one thing that I would like for us to be able to do. And I noted, I noticed last week that there was some difficulty here, but if you do it from the perspective of, I want to help you, we're all on the same team and this is what we're trying to accomplish, then people will respect you. Um, people will then maybe even go to you um, for uh, that feedback, for constructive feedback, because they know that they're going to get the truth. And also, I think confidentiality and secrecy is important. And um, because even when I was coming up as a resident too, you didn't really trust the teachers or your seniors who would have those conversations with you and then go and complain about things that you've done or complain about a junior resident to other people. Like that's not helping the situation. That's not helping the team. If you're gonna have that conversation with someone and have that constructive feedback with somebody, then have that conversation and then it's done. And then nothing else is coming from it. You don't tell anybody else, it's between you and that person. And I think that that helps build the trust and that they start to do better because they feel more comfortable around you and they respect you. So that, that's one way, um, uh, uh, or I hope that answered your question, Karen, for, for um, you know, giving feedback. Um, Lee Grant asked Spencer Johnson, I, I don't know who that is. Uh, I'm just kidding. How do you deal with your, with coworker conflict and taking the high road when someone offends you? Whew, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, it depends really. Um, it, it, you gotta know where you are it's hard sometimes because you're not, there are times when I forget where I am and that you automatically wanna just be like, wanna just like jump on it, especially if, it, if it's a safety issue for me um, or it's, it's like a, uh, you know, why, like, it's, especially if it's like somebody just being ugly to be ugly. Uh, I don't really, and I don't really tolerate like bullies or people saying stuff like that um, to other people. So. I have to remember at all times where I am. Um, taking the high road is tough. One thing that I started to do 
was I um, count. Counting has been super helpful. Or I take a step back and I just breathe. And then I come in after about three or four breaths and I say, okay, so what happened? What would you like? You know, like what's necessary? And then it's interesting too, because when people say something offensive and you don't necessarily respond right away, that it's actually more fearful for them. Because if you just sit and you listen and you look at them and then they realize what they said or what they did, some of them backtrack, some of them don't. But at that moment, that's when I kind of have to go in and do my breathing or I'm counting and I just make, put it in the mental note, a mental, the mental Rolodex sometimes, because you can't always say something. Because if you said something every time somebody offended you or said something that was slightly offensive, I mean, you'd be running to the principal's office every day if you, you know, were a student. Um, so one thing that, that helps me is if I am in a heated situation or if something was said that I don't totally agree with, either not responding, uh, taking a step back um, or counting. And then um, the other thing I would say in terms of, of uh, you know, uh, if somebody offends you too, my mom used to always tell me, Q-tip, quit taking it personally. Um, don't even don't even take it personally. And so for me, I just let it go, like let it roll off the back. Sometimes easier said than done, and you feel horrible. You feel like shit. Um, if it's whether it's your superior or you're embarrassed in a group of people, I hope that doesn't happen. But let's be real. Sometimes it does. Um, or you know you you felt to feel shame, etc. It's hard to do. Or if somebody says something offensive, particularly given the time, or because you're a woman, or because you know, uh, Vietnamese is your first language or it, they're making fun of, you know, something going on, then that's, that's unacceptable. And I think you have every right to say, you know, um, I don't appreciate that comment, but to try to do it from, again, try to get in that space where you're more cool, calm and uh, collected because then it's, it's a lot, it works out a lot smoother uh, in the end. And you also feel more like yourself when you handle things from a cool perspective. Um, I'm trying to see what other questions. Lena dismissed all these questions. These are some good questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, this one, Dorothy, that's right. How you focus on yourself when you're always doing for everyone else? That is a great question. Um, I think everybody should wake up and put an alarm in their phone that says five minutes a day, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I honestly think everybody should do that. Or what I started to do was not do it at a time thing, but literally every day I do something that I want to do. So if that is sit on the couch and watch CNN, watch a movie for 30 minutes or even watch a full movie, whatever you want to do, have a glass of wine at the end of the day, call my nephews, uh, window shop on Amazon because I'm, I'm trying to restrict myself because it's, it's, it's hard out there, especially with the one click purchase. Um, Anything that you want to do, though, you should do something for yourself. And it doesn't have to require spending money. It can be taking a bath, picking, oh, well, I guess picking up flowers would spend money. Um, but get, it, get flowers for yourself. But do one thing for yourself every day. And I think that that's one way that you could take care of yourself while focusing on everyone else. And then one thing that I realized is that, sorry, Lena, this is my last point. <laughs> one, thing that, one thing that I realized in terms of loving yourself is that if you don't love yourself and maintain yourself, you are not 100% who you are for everybody else. You can't take care of your patients as well. You can't take care of your kids. You know, you can't take care of your family members. You've got to be able to love yourself because that's your superpower. That's your energy. That's your everything. So you have to be able to maintain that in order to take care of everyone else. So the, the one thing I do, like I said, is, is something every day for me. I love that. Dr. Kelly Middleton, amazing as always. Thank you so much for joining us today and giving us such a great speech. I loved all of those points. Gratitude resonated a lot with me. I think that's very important. Um, and gratitude towards you for in the middle of a surgery doing this for us. Like that's so, I, that's really no, awesome. I got one. <laughs> That's really sweet. And I know all of us appreciated your points and we can't wait to see um, what we have in store from you later on in the year. Um, I wish you the best. And for everyone who tuned in, 
We have a great 2021 GLOW webinar series planned for you all. You'll get an email from me that will have um, the recording of this webinar if you'd like to share that with anyone, as well as um, registration links for the events that I talked about earlier and our next GLOW webinar. I hope everyone has a great Valentine's Day. And like Dr. Middleton said, pick something up for yourself. Yep. Do some self-care. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Have a good one.